Welcome everyone to another series of movie reviews. Uh, with everything shut down and uh, uh, due, to the, due to the coronavirus and uh, um, my road trips for the foreseeable future um, are currently on hold, uh, I decided to share uh, some reviews on uh, my five, top five favorite uh, road trip movies that I like to watch to uh, help get in the mood for uh, when I go on a road trip anywhere, whether it be rail fanning somewhere here in Ohio or going over to Pennsylvania or down to West Virginia or uh, you know visit a friend down in uh, North Carolina so um, anyways uh, sit back relax and uh, let's get started on the uh, take a look at uh, the uh, movies on my list <laughs> On the CBS Tuesday night movie, they call him the Fiddler. His targets, women, alone. He's the death card on the freeway. Shelley Hack is the young newscaster who tries to stop him. You need me. George Hamilton, her ex-husband. You are scared to death. I might just make it on my own. With Peter Graves, Dinah Shore, and Abe Vigoda in an explosive story of women in jeopardy. The freeway fiddler has killed nine women and will surely kill again. Death car on the freeway. So number five on my list is the 1979 TV movie Death Car on the Freeway. Uh, it's directed by um, stuntman Hal Needham. And stars um, uh, Shelley Hack as uh, uh, Jan Clausen, a news reporter who, uh, upon hearing a story of a woman who was attacked uh, on the freeway by somebody in a van, uh, she starts seeing a connection between a uh, previous news story that she had covered, um, although the police don't see any connection. Basically, in both cases, the women were uh, in the stories were trying to get off of the freeway. Uh, a van pulled up next to them, and rather than merge in behind them, the women cut in front of the van, and the van driver uh, went nuts, and basically uh, went into a fit of road rage and ran both women off the road. Uh, police didn't see any connection in it because in their for earlier incident, the van was black, and this one, the van was blue, and uh, anyways, police don't take it seriously until uh, sometime afterwards, uh, another woman, um, she uh, uh, is attacked in a similar fashion, and in this time, or in this case, the uh, woman uh, not only was spun out into a, in front of other traffic and uh, killed in the uh, well, seriously injured, and then later died from her injuries in the collision. Um, you know, police finally took notice, and several more attacks happened. And so, Shelley Hack, uh, this is, of course, her first movie. So, and this is pre Charlie's Angels. So, she's doing some investigative work. And uh, she uh, basically um, tracks down who the killer most likely is, uh, plays to take interest. And um, then, as she's heading home, the killer uh, finds her on the freeway, chases her in her van or chases her in his van and uh, starts attacking her on the freeway and um, basically there's an explosive ending um, and that's the end of the movie um, but the movie um, you know it's directed by Hal Needham who uh, was uh, well known for Smokey and the Bandit on uh, Cannonball Run uh, which coming up later in uh, on my reviews. So back in September 1979 when the movie first opened um, I did watch it that night on, on CBS and uh, uh, I thought it was a really good movie. It's really thrilling try, um, trying to figure out who the uh, killer was in the movie and there's a lot of clues as to who the killer might be. The thing that is they never explain who the killer is. Uh, like in the next movie on, on the list you never see who the killer is or find out who exactly the killer is. 
Um, the movie it's kind of fallen into obscurity. Um, after the initial CBS broadcast, I only remember ever seeing it again. Uh, it's on a late night movie on a Saturday night, uh, like after the 11 o'clock news from one of the local stations. And uh, that was all, the only other, two, no, sort of the only two times I ever saw it on, uh, aired on TV. Uh, that was in 2004 is when I found a VHS copy of it. And uh, then I briefly had a, a fan page for it. There's nothing online uh, about the movie except like a little blurb on websites about it. So I uh, had a, briefly for a while had a fan page up for the movie. And someone uh, sent me a copy of the original broadcast, which I've got on right now, uh, from 1979. And which it's really cool because it has all the commercials and everything too. Uh, but you know this movie, for me, what gets me into uh, gets me into the um, the uh, mood for a road trip is you know I drove you know back before the coronavirus I drove on uh, 270 across Columbus uh, twice a day. So dri you know driving on the freeways regular occurrence for me, and you know. I've seen, you know, some of the stuff that goes on in this movie, you know, where, you know, aggressive driving and then in a few cases, actual road rage actually taking place on the road. And so, you know, it's, it's a movie that, you know, is really, you know, ties in with something I can relate to, you know, on a day-to-day -day -day basis, grand Nothing as extreme as this, but uh, the one uh, review I heard online was uh, the stunts in the movie are basically, um, it's kind of like on chips, only it's like chips on steroids. So um, there are some extreme crashes on here, but uh, which of course it's the 70s, you know, minor fender bender cars, cars always explode. Uh, but. You know, it's a good movie. It's worth checking out. I believe it is on YouTube. Uh, last I checked, I saw a couple people had the whole movie up on YouTube. So, um, it, you know, it's an obscure, kind of obscure nowadays uh, since it's been out of circulation for so long. Um, I know that I once had um, the movie up on YouTube, and Warner Brothers had it taken off for copyright infringement, but yet, cop no one's ever actually released the, a DVD or, um, you know, I think the VHS that I have originally, um, I think that might have been a bootleg, I'm not sure, but, but, you know, it's a good movie, uh, fun to watch. Some folks have claimed that, um, Death Car on the Freeway is similar to the next movie that I'm going to be reviewing, um, but, Really, there's, I mean, there's some parallels, but it's really not um, the exact same thing as the next movie, which, let's take a look. list of road trip movies is the 1971 uh, Steven Spielberg classic Duel. If you've never watched this movie, this is one, If you're especially if you're a Spielberg fan, you have to watch this movie. Uh, this is Steven Spielberg's very first movie that he ever directed. Uh, it was originally a TV movie, I believe it was for NBC, 
Uh, it ran uh, 75 minutes minus commercials. Um, and then uh, shortly afterwards, it was expanded. They had some expanded scenes that added in. And uh, it was expanded to a full 90-minute movie, uh, which was then released in theaters. Uh, the movie basically stars uh, Dennis Weaver as a salesman on his way to a business meeting. Uh, the movie is based on the Richard Matheson short story of the same name. And basically, he's traveling to a business meeting and decides to take the um, back roads uh, to, to avoid congestion on the highways and the interstates and everything. So along the way he comes upon a slow-moving tanker truck uh, who um, you know is going well below the speed limit. He passes the truck, uh, truck passes him, cuts him off, and then uh, sl starts slowing down again and then he passes the truck, the truck is on its horn and um, then catches up to him at a gas station as he's stopping for gas. So as uh, after he takes off, the truck catches up to him again, keeps wanting to go faster than him, but then as soon as he, the truck's past him, the truck slows down. And basically it's kind of a cat and mouse game uh, between the two of them where you know he's trying to get around the truck trying to, because the truck's going way below the speed limit down like 30 miles an hour or something like that. And then um, he finally gets past the truck, and the truck basically starts tailgating him at speeds up to almost 100 miles an hour going down this mountain uh, hill or a road. And uh, anyways, um, there's a brief scene at a roadside diner um, where, uh, in, if I remember right from the book or from the short story that I read, uh, it was just a brief scene in the story, but in the movie, Spielberg expands it to where he goes into the restroom, comes out, realizes the, tr the tr tanker truck is now outside of the restaurant, and uh, he's looking around at everyone trying to figure out who's the truck driver, because he never saw the truck driver. And um, so anyways, he... Uh, you know, he's trying to figure out who the truck driver is, and then uh, the truck takes off, he takes off after the truck, and uh, then uh, goes back to his car, uh, he goes running after the truck, actually, and then he goes back to his car, takes off, thinking the truck's well ahead of him and everything, uh, stops to uh, help a school bus that's uh, stalled alongside the road, and then the truck comes back, he takes off, the truck actually gives the school bus a push start and then um, he stops at railroad crossing and uh, you know he's uh, waiting for the freight train to go past and the truck tries to push him into the freight train um, when he try, stops to try to phone for help at, at a gas station uh, the truck driver basically runs over the phone booth and uh, chases him back out onto the road uh, basically preventing him from trying to get help or anything like that. Um, and the rest of the movie is basically one big chase scene, which is pretty well done, I thought. Um, I mean, basically the car, he basically drove the heck out of the car, if you, if you watch the movie. Because uh, at the end, the car is basically on its last legs. Um, then they basically go head on at each other. He jumps out, car explodes in front of the semi, the semi... Uh, goes off the edge of a cliff and um, crashes down into the canyon. Uh, the movie, um, it was, you know, it, it Grand Yacht yeah, dated is from 1971, but the movie, I mean, it's really a really good, you know, little thriller. Um, and you know, some folks have said, you know, like I said on the last movie with Death Car on the Freeway. Some folks have said that duels like Death Car on the Freeway. Death Car on the Freeway, I mean, but all the cases the that they, you know, played out on the screen for Death Car on the Freeway, the women were made an aggressive driving maneuver towards the van, and then the van driver basically goes into a fit of road rage and 
runs them off the road or spins them out into other or starts ramming them into other vehicles, that kind of thing. In dual, I mean, the truck driver basically was toying with with, uh, with uh, Dennis Weaver's character throughout the whole movie, up until the last big chase when basically it was all out, basically. And because you know, there's several times in the movie where, um, like in the scene playing behind me, where Dennis Weaver's gotten around the truck, um, and he's trying to get, uh, and the trucker's basically coming up ahead, uh, behind him, and the trucker starts basically tapping his back bumper as he comes up behind him, and the trucker could easily, at any time, you know, just literally ran, ran him, run him off the road. But, you know, basically the trucker is like a cat playing with a mouse, you know, basically scaring the crap out of him, basically, and uh, up until, you know, towards the end where he went in, basically went in for the kill. So, it's a good movie. Um, it's, uh, you know, no matter which version you watch, uh, Ovation, the Ovation channel, uh, a couple years ago, actually it's actually more than a few years ago, they did a uh, broadcast of the original 1971 uh, edit of the movie, uh, which I dubbed onto DVD, and took the commercials out, and, you know, it's 75 minutes, but, you know, it's interesting because, you know, there's some alternate dialogue and uh, uh, some different edits and some of the scenes and everything, which uh, it's kind of, it's neat being able to see the original version of the movie before it was expanded to the 90-minute uh, movie version. So, uh, but Duel and Death Car on the Freeway, those are the more serious movies for uh, getting into the mood of, uh, of uh, going on a road trip. Uh, we're now going to switch gears and we're going to go uh, dive into the comedies, starting with number three on my list. This is the story of an average guy and a beautiful girl. Hi. Don't tell me your name. I'll just call you Beauty. You must be a sensitive person. I bet you're a fan of Rod McEwen's. I try to be. And his best friend. I am Captain Chaos. Been a cop long. Right. And a family doctor. Holy sh Come on right here. And how they all set out one day <laughs> in an ambulance from New York to California at 150 miles per hour. California, here we come! But they aren't the only ones. Because this is the Cannonball Run. America's illegal Grand Prix. And it doesn't matter how you get there. It's who gets there first. Burt Reynolds is the defending champion. On his team, Farrah Fawcett. Are you one of those volleyballers? Cannonballs. Dom DeLuise and Jack Elam. And here comes the competition. Well, yeah, hurry up, you little... Dean Martin. We happen to be in a race. Sammy Davis Jr. You, Shorty. Where'd you get all that jewelry? Take a layup, layup. Mel Tillis and Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> Jackie Chan. Oh, the... And Roger Moore as himself. I'm Roger Moore. <laughs> Roger Moore. <laughs> We're in kind of a hurry, so if you could just bless it a little bit. We'll Unscrupulous. Oh, I gotta bless her. Oh, I'm sorry, Father. She's a Zen Buddhist. Yeah, you Desperate characters. Ready. Fire. By land. By sea. By air. They'll do anything. Drive anything. Say anything. It's hard to understand you. When I called you, I was doing 140 miles an hour. And stop at nothing. Normally, I drive right around the speed limit. We all make mistakes, miss. But 160? To win the Cannonball Run. Yeah, we're looking good. Come on, faster! Cannonball Run. The only movie to get over 200 tickets before it even opens. So 
director Hal Needham in 1981 came out with Cannonball Run. Uh, it's an all-star cast. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them are uh, lately when you watch the credits have passed away. Um, anyways, the uh, it's basically about an I illegal road rally kind of race where um, basically running from Connecticut to California. Um, which apparently was based on a natural race that Hal Needham had and some his friends had participated in. Uh, they weren't able to complete the uh, van that they used uh, to basically making it look like an ambulance. Um, it had uh, broken down somewhere along the route uh, to California. Uh, but the movie, I mean, it's, it's kind of a, like a slapstick comedy kind of thing. Um, and, uh, it's, I mean, it's a wide variety of characters and everything that, you know, are taking place in this, uh, in this race. Uh, you know, you got Burt Reynolds, Dom DeLuise, Farrah Fawcett, uh, Dean Martin, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, Terry Bradshaw, um, um, it's just, uh, a huge, huge cast that they have put in this as a movie. Um, a lot of, you know, crazy stunts and stuff. Uh, some stuff it's like, yeah, that probably would never happen, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a comedy and, you know, the whole thing of, you know, everyone trying to uh, get to their destination or to this destination uh, across uh, across country um, first, you know, while avoiding the law and everything. Um, you know, it's 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 an entertaining um, movie to kind of get in the mood for um, um, for uh, you know getting out on the road and basically for the, that long drive to. Uh, get across t uh, country, but or get to wherever you, you're going. You also have uh, Roger Moore, who is of course famous for playing James Bond. Uh, he basically plays a guy who's pretending to be Roger Moore, so he's basically spoofing himself um, in this movie, um, which was I thought was hilarious. Um, and then. Uh, 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 you know, there's there's just so much. Um, they spoof, uh, uh, make references to some uh, other movies like uh, uh, one um, one spot spot in the uh, beginning of the movie. Uh, Burt Reynolds and Domino Louise are trying to figure out uh, what kind of uh, vehicle they're going to use for uh, getting cross country uh, to avoid uh, getting, having to pay traffic tickets or anything like that. And uh, before they come up with the idea of ambulance, uh, Burt Reynolds makes a comment uh, that we could do it in Trans Am. And then he's like, no, nah, that's been done before. And of course, that's the reference to the next movie in our list, uh, coming in at number two. At last, a warm, sensitive, touching story about the close personal relationship between a man and a woman. Between a trucker and his dog. Fred, I'm so damn tired of picking you up. I got to Fred! Between a father no way. and his son. No way that you could come from my loins. And how they all took to the road one day for a quiet little drive in the country. From Georgia to Texas and back. In 28 hours flat. With a truckload of bootleg beer. I'll be driving this one. Hey, uh, blocker, blocker. You'll be driving the truck. That's this is Bandit 1, and that is uh, Bandit 2. <laughs> now, who would do a thing like that? would <laughs> be crazy, you know that? Yeah, you know that. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, how much money did you say it was? $81,000. Universal presents Burt Reynolds, Sally Field, Jerry Reed, and Fred. We're going to really have to cook. I mean, put it on the back burner and let's cook. Is that a 10 4? 10 4. And the only thing that stands between them and an $80,000 prize Jackie Gleason as Sheriff Buford T. Justice. I gotta barbecue your bandit. I got a smoking report for you. What's your handle, son? My handle's smoking. 
smoky bear and I'm tail grabbing you right now. This is Smokey and the Bandit. The story about a lazy weekend in Alabama. Texas. Mississippi. Arkansas. Georgia. Daddy, the top came off. No. We ain't gonna make it, son. We come this far, ain't we? Look, when we say we're gonna do a job, can we do a job? It's me that after they don't even know Clint Snow exists. Oh, they know. Well, now, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit, proving once and for all, it's not where you're going to count, it's who the hell's in back of you. You've got the ducking, you got to keep that key to truck it. Just put that hammer down and give it hell. So in 1977, uh, director Hal Needham um, made one of my favorite um, road trip movies. This has been one of my favorites for longer than the other ones, um, ever since I was a little kid. Um, and that was Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, Burt Reynolds, Sally Field, uh, Jerry Reed, Jackie Gleason. Um, they all team up, basically. Uh, Burt Reynolds and Jerry Reed uh, play uh, Bandit and Snowman, uh, two truckers who are uh, bringing a shipment of, um, of uh, bootleg Coors beer east of Mississippi into Georgia. Uh, back at the time, um, apparently uh, Coors beer was not allowed to be shipped east of Mississippi or east of the Mississippi River because of uh, some regulations or something. From, I can't remember exactly, but... Um, anyways, um, they're bringing the, uh, uh, the beer uh, east of the Mississippi. Um, on the way back, uh, as they're leaving Texarkana, can't, uh, Texas, um, the a um, bandit picks up uh, 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 Sally Field's character, uh, who's nicknamed is Frog in the movie because she's always hopping around according to Burt Reynolds. Um, anyways, um, she uh, apparently has run out on a wedding that um, she was uh, set to uh, be married apparently and decided not to get married. Um, anyways, um, the father of the groom, uh, played by Jackie Gleason, uh, is also uh, the sheriff of Texarkana. Um, and he, or I think it might have been Texas, okay, I'm not sure exactly, but he was from there in Texas. And so he's basically chasing her to get her back to marry um, uh, his son. And it's basically a hilarious uh, cross country road trip. Basically, they're they travel from Atlanta to Texarkana and back in 28 hours or less. Is basically what the uh, whole uh, uh, premise of the uh, bootleg of the bootlegging of the uh, 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 beer was. So the uh, I mean the movie basically uh, it was filmed down in the uh, uh, southern United States on location. Uh, someone apparently at one point told uh, uh, Hal Needham that he had uh, uh, basically done a documentary on um, the South, <laughs> basically, and uh, it's it's a fun movie to watch. It's um, uh, you know you you're gonna you watch this movie, you're gonna pick up a lot of you know CB talk and everything. Of course, back in the 70s, CBs were the thing and vehicles and everything. So, uh, but you know it's a fun movie. Uh, it's, uh, 90 minutes long and basically. Um, you know, it spoofs, it's not like a, you know, long vacation type of movie kind of thing like, uh, you know, The Cannonball Run was, uh, which was also directed by Hal Needham, and as well as Death Car on the Freeway. So, so yeah, three of, three of my favorite movies, road trip movies, are all directed by Hal Needham. Anyways, um, the, uh, 
you know, it's a fun movie to watch if you're for like a quick road trip, you know, going somewhere and back and within a day, uh, like a day road trip kind of thing to watch. But, um, um, you know, obviously, you know, now you're not going to be going out and avoiding the law or anything like that, but it's fun to, you know, uh, you know, just sit back and relax. And this is, it's one of the, this is one, like Cannonball Run, this is one of those movies where you don't have to really put any thought into, um, what you're watching. You basically just, you know, you sit back, relax, and for, you know, those 90 minutes, you know, you're off in this, you know, fantasy world where, you know, anything and everything could probably happen. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just, you know, one of those movies where you can just escape the real world and relax and, um, you know, forget about all the bad stuff in the world. So, so with that in mind, we're going to move on to number one on my list. And this is my alt one that I absolutely have to watch every time I go on a road trip somewhere. This summer, when you think vacation, think National Lampoon's Vacation. See the real America. Hey, underpants. Hey, yellow. <gasps> it's friendly. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Don't you want to look at the Grand Canyon? It's educational. It's great. And most of all, it's fun. <laughs> The dog went on the picnic basket. Let Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, Imogene Coca, Randy Quay, John Candy, and Christy Brinkley. Well, are you going to go for it? This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Take you for a ride. This summer, when you think vacation, think National Lampoon's... Vacation. Better check under the hood. So number one on my all-time favorite road trip movie list is the 1983 hit uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, starring Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo as uh, Clark and Alan Griswold, uh, who are trying to take uh, their uh, kids on vacation from Chicago to uh, Wally World in Los Angeles and basically um, stop at all the roadside attractions and everything along the way as well as visit uh, some uh, cousin relatives in Kansas um, which turns into a hilarious little detour. Um, the movie um, was pretty big hit at the time. Um, I love watching it. Um, the uh, the movie it's basically it spoofs anything and everything that can go wrong on a road trip, uh, from car problems to um, you know uh, dealing with mishaps um, uh, with uh, in one case the um, Aunt Edna's dog. Uh, the, uh, after visiting the cousins in Kansas, uh, they have to take an aunt cross country with them to Phoenix, um, and there's a mishap with the dog, which was hilarious, um, tragic, but <laughs> at the same time was hilarious the way they portrayed it. Um, and you know, there's just so much in the movie that you know I've had parallels with on my drives. Um, whether it be, you know, around Ohio or down to uh, West Virginia or, uh, you know, Pennsylvania or North Carolina or wherever. Um, the, you know, I remember, still remember back in 2003 going over to, 2003 was probably actually my first real vacation that I ever took, um, you know, after college and, you know, first time ever going somewhere by myself, no family or anything 
uh, anybody tagging along or anything like that or going with my family I should say like when I was a kid but uh, I went over to Pennsylvania and uh, to the Altoona area and everything was going smooth up until I hit Pittsburgh uh, the you know I got there and the as heading uh, across the coming through the Fort Pitt Tunnel into Pittsburgh and I was needing to head east but my exit was closed apparently I'd missed the detour so it was either go straight into downtown or head back west once I got across the river and I ended up circling downtown Pittsburgh about I think about three times I counted got back on the interstate heading back into the tunnel uh, to head back south and or back into the direction I was, had come from. Um, saw a days in, went in, and asked for directions. I actually, I actually still remember I went up to the clerk and I told her, you know, this is probably going to sound strange coming from a guy, but I'm lost and I need directions. And uh, she got a laugh out of that. So uh, she gave me directions. I uh, took a really, uh, is really a scenic uh, detour into or through Pittsburgh. Um, I don't know, there was one side, street I was on, it was literally a 45 degree angle upwards. And I was going up and I was in a little Grand Am at the time and uh, uh, got onto US 22 finally. And then um, once I got to uh, onto 22, I hit the road construction. They had uh, they were basically widening 22, so they had all the traffic shifted over to one side uh, to two lanes, one lane in each direction, and it was bumper to bumper traffic. I'm sitting there. Uh, I had to roll down the windows down, turn the AC off. I actually had to turn the heater on because I could literally what I was literally watching the gas gauge on my or the not the gas gauge but the uh, temperature gauge on my car going up. So I had to. It's like you know. Sitting there in August, windows down, uh, he heater blasting me in the face because I'm trying to keep my car from overheating because I couldn't get out of traffic. And the whole time I'm thinking, you know, you know, this movie, and I actually started reciting the line where Chevy Chase is like, this is no longer a vacation, this is a quest, this is a quest for fun. I'm going to have fun and you're going to have fun. And I was literally screaming the whole speech. Uh, sitting there stopped in traffic to just vent and release stress. So finally got out of traffic, got to Galitzin at the bed and breakfast where I was going to, and um, and uh, got checked in. Right as I was checking in, a thunderstorm came through, to setting off the tornado sirens. Um, so that was the start of my first vacation <laughs> ever. So it was like, you know, you know, watching this movie, seeing all the mishaps and everything that the Griswolds go through, you know, it was, it's, um, you know, this is, I always get a laugh watching this, with everything that happens to them. Because, um, you know, there's so many parallels of, um, with uh, what, you know, can happen on the road with what happens, you know, in this movie, so. But, uh, yeah, this is definitely one that you know I always have to watch anytime I go on a long road trip, whether it be rail fanning or anywhere else. So, well, that's a look at my uh, top five favorite road trip movies. Uh, I'm sure there's others out there that would uh, uh, be appropriate to watch for getting in the mood for a road trip as well. Um, but those are my five that I always like to watch. Um, feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and. Share your thoughts of, you know, what movies you'd like to watch to uh, get in the mood for a road trip or if, if you do, do that sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, let me know what you think. Like I said, rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay well, stay safe. Catch you in the next video.